How's it going today, guys and gals? My name is Gene, and welcome to another AA meeting. After a long whole month wait, the time is finally here for the newest chapter of Attack on Titan. If we all remember back in chapter 135, the Alliance begun battle with Eren. Armin was taken away, and all seemed hopeless for the Lions as they were being swarmed by the manifested Titans until Falco showed up with Gabby and Annie in his new jaw Titan. The suspense of chapter 135 had me on my toes, so let's hope chapter 136 can do the same. With only three chapters remaining after this one, we ask, what will happen to Armin? And will the Alliance be able to beat Eren? Well, let's find out, shall we? If this is your first time in one of these meetings, I do a quick rundown of the chapter and then I follow it up with some topics that I feel are worth discussing. Another thing to note is due to the publication company of Attack on Titan taking down my last video due to um, unfair copyright in my opinion, I will be breaking down these events a little different. I'll use less pictures than I normally to protect this channel from further strikes. The pictures I will use are solely to educate my audience in a transformative way. For the audience, I encourage you to do one of two things. Either listen and use your imagination, or follow along my breakdown and have the chapter at the ready. I'm positive the link of the chapter will be somewhere down in my comment section. Wink wink. Without further ado, let's jump into this chapter and never forget to support the creator Isayama and his team by purchasing Attack on Titan manga. As the people on the opposite side of the battle watch the madness that ensues, Falco and the lions fly away from the destruction. Chapter 136, titled Devote Your Hearts, begins with the lions discussing in shock why Gabby, Falco, and Annie came back. Gabby informs her cousin that she can be of assistance in battle, as Annie lets Reiner know that Falco's transformation destroyed the ship they were traveling on. Kiyomi allowed them to do this, so to repay her kindness, Gabby lets the Alliance know they need to stop the rumbling. The Alliance looks in shock, while Reiner bends down to Falco and whispers if he remembers what he promised Reiner long ago. Falco, with determination in his eyes, internally vows he will protect Gabby at all costs. Lover girl Annie asks about Armin and Peek, but Mikasa lets her in on the current situation. Annie looks stupefied as someone mentions that the Titan that took Armin should be somewhere on the back. Mikasa asks Annie for assistance as she vows to bring back Armin. Reiner reminds her that Peek is also captured, and that the best plan of action is to go save her since Aaron's nape was wrapped with explosives. Levi in pain states that they will be doing both. They will split up, with one group going to save Armin and the other going to blow up Aaron's nape. Mikasa, with concern in her eyes, tries to reason with the captain. Levi interrupts and informs her they are in no position to be concerned with rescuing Eren. Connie and Jean both agree and tell Mikasa that they have no choice but to kill Eren. Levi states that there's a lot he wanted to tell Eren as he realizes their new objective. Connie agrees as he states that due to his own faults, Levi is injured. He also states that the founding is too powerful for any other plan. Jean, with grief in his face, tells Mikasa, they have to kill Eren. As Falco flies back towards the fight, Mikasa can produce no reaction as she is simply shocked. Annie pulls onto Mikasa and ensures her to only focus on saving Armin, as she should let the others handle the rest. Mikasa agrees, and as everyone has a moment of silence, Gabby chips in remembering the time she shot Eren's head off. She relates to the lions that once she did, some centipede-like creature jumped out from Eren's spine and reattached it to his head. Annie remarks on how gross that sounds, but Gabby ensures that this is where the source of the power must originate from, and informs them that there is a possibility they will see it again. As Falco flies over the Marlins, they sit in shock and are surprised that they are going to continue fighting. This motivates them to continue the fight as well. All of a sudden, the Eldians from the camps of Marley walk up on the soldiers. As the Marlins realize they do not have armbands, they raise their weapons. The Eldians do the same, and the two stand off against one another. Annie's father jumps between the two groups and simply assures the Marlins that they are only here for peace and looking for medical assistance. The soldiers state that they cannot do this and ask what they are really after. One of the Eldians tells Annie's father that the history between the two groups is, is too bitter against one another to move on from their di past differences. As the situation there begins to escalate, the secretary of the Marley side removes the bullet from his chamber as the two st sides still face off towards one another. We cut back to the Alliance as Jean is shocked that the two groups are still after one another. Back on Eren's Titan, several Warhammer Titans have created arrows as they are about to shoot at Falco and the Alliance. Falco boosts his speed and rushes to get closer to Eren. As they get close, Jean and Reiner hop off Falco as their mission is to safe peek and blow up the nape. Reiner transforms and lands on Eren, 
Connie tells them not to die as Reiner wishes them the same. The armored begins to battle the other Titans as Jean makes his way towards Peak and the trigger. As Jean gets closer, however, other Titans appear with one goal in mind, and that is to stop him from succeeding. We cut back to the Warhammer, who still has Peak on the trident. As she looks back at the chaos, Peak escapes from her Titan, running down towards the Warhammer. As she's stumbling down, she transforms and goes after the nape. She succeeds in this and goes over to help out Jean with the Titans he was fighting. The other Titans lunge after the cart, as Jean tells her to run away. The cart Titan is ripped to shreds, but Peak escapes once again and assures Jean that her Titan is more than just a donkey as she transforms once again and defeats both the Titans who were after her. She monologues that she is strong and will do this a hundred times if she has to and tells Jean to focus on blowing up the nape. Jean didn't really need this speech because he kind of just went off to blow the trigger anyway. Just then, more Titans appear to stop Jean in his track. As he uses his 3D maneuvering gear to lower himself below Aaron's ribcage, Peak states that even though she can continue doing this a hundred times, it's useless against an army of millions. We cut back to the others riding towards the rear to find Armin. Annie notices that Berthold's Titan is also being used as a puppet. They look at all the different Titans trying to locate the Titan that took Armin away. They all look very similar in nature, but Connie notices that there's only one Titan that is running away. That Titan is not only but the dangerous Okapai, or Pig, Titan. The three jump down and begin their objective. Gabby informs Levi that she's pretty accurate with a gun and could probably assist in killing the Titans. However, Levi informs her that her gun will be useless against this particular enemy. We then get a panel of Levi's damaged leg as he begins to think about his past comrades. First is Erwin as he remembers back to why he cannot finish his final order to eliminate the Beast Titan. Then back to Armin, Mikasa, and Eren when he overheard them talking about the sea. And finally, to his fallen comrades who devoted their heart to the cause. He assures himself that if this wasn't a dream worth fighting for, none of them would have devoted themselves to this cause. Levi also reminisces to when he chose to save Armin and states he has no regrets because Armin, like Erwin, had that same look of freedom in his eyes. Back on Eren, the saving Armin squad faces off against the other Titans as the pig Titan rushes away from them. Annie notices that it is not running towards the back, but towards the head. Her and Mikasa look at one another as they mentally form a plan. Annie launches Mikasa at the Titan carrying Armin, and as she reaches ever so close, more Titans appear, but this time to protect the pig Titan. Mikasa defeats the Titans, but is rushed by the Armored, who breaks her blades. The new Armored Titan attacks Mikasa, and just when things seem lost, and he comes out to save the day. As the pig titan runs away, the three come close together as they are being sworn by hundreds of titans. The final act showcases Armin staring over his body. He demands his lifeless body to move as he needs to save everyone. Reiner, Peek, Jean, Connie, Mikasa, and Annie. He curses at his body stating that he hates himself because his body always holds him back. As he screams, he realizes all is lost and begins to cry. His hands clasped to the ground, he realizes he's clutching sand. This knocks some sense into him that he's not dead, but in the pathway connected to the Eldians. He thinks to himself of ways he can stop Eren. As he turns around, he notices a familiar face. A Jaeger, but no ordinary Jaeger. It's Zeke. Armin approaches Zeke. As Zeke acknowledges Armin, he states, So... Ymir ate you too. And that concludes chapter 136. And just like the other chapters as of late, this one was filled with nothing but intense moments. There are a couple of things I'd like to discuss from this chapter, those being the ending, the spine centipede that attached towards Ymir and Eren, and finally, why these two groups of people still hate one another. Let's begin with the ending. Zeke stating Ymir ate Armin as well has me feeling pretty good about my last theory video. I discuss how I think Ymir has been all-knowing of the events leading up to this point, and is using Eren as a puppet to secure her desire to destroy humanity. If you haven't seen that video, I suggest watching it, but let's break down these two's current predicament. As they are trapped in this world, I get vibes back from when Eren and Zeke were stuck in the paths as well. Zeke had more control then. Circumstances are relatively the same. First off, Zeke is on the ground like he was last time. Though he's not in chains at this current moment, He's playing with the sands that once chained him down. In this world, Zeke's royalty has no power, 
As he plays with the sand, it symbolizes that even though he is not trapped like the first time, he is still your mere slave and using his royalty to use Aaron's founder. At this moment, Armin is powerless as well, but has more of a relation to Aaron than Zeke does. I can foresee the next chapter we're going to be getting a full knowledge of Ymir's plan, with there being only three chapters left, and most likely the last one will be some sort of epilogue. I do not foresee a two-chapter flashback like Zeke and Aaron went through. But why Ymir is the way she is, and possibly more information on the centipede-like being. I also think a child like Aaron is going to show up as well, and just like Aaron freeing Ymir from her shackles, I can see the roles being reversed and Armin telling little Aaron that he is not free and break him from this mind control. Speaking of the spinal creature, I'm happy it was brought up again. As this story started to close, I had a feeling it probably wasn't going to be brought up again. To throw criticism on myself, I remember when the creature was first introduced. My little brother was so enthralled by it and asked me if it was ever brought up again. I ignorantly stated that it was never mentioned and, and it didn't need to be brought back up because this is a work of fiction. In this universe, I can foresee a strange creature breeding powers because none of it's real. Most of this stemmed from me being very passionate about this series, and to me, I didn't see really much importance of it. But I'm glad Isiyama has taken the time to explain what this creature is and where its origins came from. At the moment, I'm kind of clueless myself of what it can be, but knowing Isayama, like I know Isayama, he might forget the last time we saw Zeke, he had long hair and a beard, and now it's short. But when it comes to the main story, he doesn't miss a beat. And now let's discuss something I'm more passionate about. History always repeats itself to the point, personally, I debate if it should be taught. No matter what happens in the past, things seem to repeat itself. In the world of Attack on Titan, you'd assume that with Eren killing millions of people, that this would unify people. Isiyama showed us here that this might not be the case, as the two sides seem at war with one another. History is delicate. These two groups of people hate one another because of it. There might be no changing the deep-rooted hatred brought by all the past. Let's take a second to bring this to the real world. What is your culture? Who are the people that your culture has had beef with in the past? Even though times are different, there's still this animosity that affects most of us. The ending of this standoff seems like the two groups will put aside their differences and hopefully assist one another in this predicament and possibly in the future allow the two groups to live in peace with one another. Will this cancel out the history? No. But I think that's the message Attack on Titan wants to spread. That even though someone is different from us in culture, and though those cultures can collide, we're all humans and should be able to live amongst each other. Because if we keep living by history's past, we'll never be able to create a new future. Anyway, that is going to do it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this chapter as much as I did. Let's create a discussion down in the comments below. What was your guys' favorite part, and what do you guys think is going to happen next? Again, thank you all for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you don't want to miss another AA meeting, please consider subscribing. This has been June of Ascension Anime, and I'll see you guys later. Ciao. Whoa, Let's go.